God-given vision can be interesting. Um, it can be exciting. Um, it can be refreshing. But then also it can be a little frustrating. Maybe you've been there where you know that God has given you a vision for your life, something that you know will change the world around you and change your family for generations to come. And you know it was God because it was bigger than you. You know it was God because it was uh, bigger than anything you could accomplish on your own. And you start to get excited about this vision only to find out that chances are you may have to wait a little while in order to see it manifest. Habakkuk gives us some uh, insight and some uh, encouragement here because he requested something. God gave him a vision and he was waiting for that thing to come to pass. Habakkuk 2, and I'm reading it to you. Um, uh, uh, I'm gonna read it to you from the NLT version. It says, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but in the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. At the end of that it says, though it seems like it's taken a long time to get here, just wait for it, the vision is going to come to pass. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie, meaning that if he said that he's going to do it, it's going to get done. Jeremiah 32, uh, verse 27, it says that there's nothing too hard for God. And even though it seems like there's a delay, there's not denial, and the delay it's not necessarily a failure. It's not a failure on God's part. With well, the delay is God's timing. He's waiting on the timing. He's waiting on us to meet up with his timing in order to fulfill that vision that he has for our life. Um, the Message Bible reads like this. He says, if it seems slow in coming, wait for it. It's on the way. It will come right on time. Habakkuk wanted change. He was concerned. He was a little frustrated. Uh, God had allowed the Babylonians to hold Judah captive and uh, he says, Lord, how, how long must I call for help? And you don't listen in chapter one. And some of us have been there. We're saying, Lord, how long will I cry out for my season to change? I know that I'm not meant to be this way forever because I have, a, I have a vision. I have a promise. It's something that you downloaded in me by virtue and by way of the Holy Spirit. So I know that this is not supposed to last forever, but it seems like it's lasting forever. He says, so how long will it be? And maybe you're there. How long has it been uh, for you where you're saying, Lord, I feel like you're not even hearing me. And the Lord replied, he says, look, I'm doing something new in your day, in your own day. He says something you wouldn't believe even if, if, if someone told you about it. Habakkuk 1 and 5. The Lord says, look, I know you've been waiting for a long time, but trust me, I'm doing something big, right? Uh, so big that if someone told you about it, you still wouldn't believe it. And so in Habakkuk 2, 17, or 117, he says, will you let them get away with this forever? Will they succeed forever? Will you allow me to stay in this state forever? But then after Habakkuk got over the pity party aspect, and we've all been there where we've gone to the throne of grace and we've just cried out and, and sometimes the crying out became a pity party. And he got over that. And he says in Habakkuk 2 verse 1, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There, I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. Habakkuk 2 and 1. And so for some of us that are sitting here, we're waiting for God to answer as to when we'll get this vision, when this thing will come to fruition. Habakkuk says, follow my lead, follow my blueprint. The first thing is, he says, you're going to have to ascend. Chapter two, it says, verse one, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There, I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. King James Version says, I will stand my watch. I will be upright. I will elevate myself. Watchtowers were, were nearly two to three stories tall. So if you can look at the symbolism here and look how and look, and look at the relationship, he had to climb up two to three stories high in order to hear from God. Now, you, now we understand from the Tower of Babel, we're not climbing up to get closer to God, but we are climbing up to separate ourselves from things and people that would normally have our attention as opposed to hearing the voice of God. Sometimes you have to celebrate, celebrate, separate yourself and elevate, right? Go a little bit higher, right? And this proves positive because one, not everybody has the strength and endurance to climb. Not everybody wants to climb. And honestly, being someone with, with lung issues, I can tell you the air gets thinner the higher you go. And so some people just aren't equipped to go higher with you. And so in this season, it's, uh, he's saying, I don't, I'm not saying I'm leaving you forever, but what I am saying is I have to go up here so I can get closer uh, to a point where I can get the proper posture to hear from God. This isn't the first time we've seen this. Exodus chapter 19, exact, um, uh, verse 1, exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. After breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. Moses had to leave everything that he was familiar with. He had to climb up to go see God. 
And so sometimes while you're waiting on God to answer pertaining to a vision that he gave you, you may have to climb a little bit and get away from some things and people and situations. Second thing Habakkuk said is, I'm going to wait. I'm going to keep watch. He says there in Habakkuk 2, I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. After you've separated from everything and everybody, you may just have to sit still for a minute until God answers. How many of us can just sit there still in stillness waiting on God to answer? Not talking, not, not, not plea bargaining, but just sitting still waiting on him to answer. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, look, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct your path. Um, I'm just going to wait on the God. I'm just going to wait on God. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Isaiah 55, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And uh, as the heavens are higher, verse 9, Isaiah 55, than the earth, so are my thoughts. My thoughts are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That word thoughts means plans and my ways means journey. He says, look, my plans for you um, and I will take you on a journey that you're not even familiar with because they're higher than yours. So, God, I'll just sit in this place. Right. I have nowhere else to go. I've separated myself from anything that could distract me. So I'll just sit in this place and wait for you to speak. He says, I'm going to wait here to see what he'll say. Waiting on God can be a little irritating. Waiting on him to speak can be a little bit irritating because God doesn't speak according to our will. He speaks according to his time. And the question is, are we able to sit still? Now, here's the thing. Had he not ascended, he'd be in the mix and in the courtyard of the voices and opinions of everyone else. But sometimes God will require you to separate yourself and go a little bit higher to where you can't be distracted by anyone. You can only sit there and wait on him to speak. And so now after God speaks, he said, I want you to write down this revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation speaks of an appointed time. It speaks of the end. It will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. When God answers you and he gives you the finalized version of the vision, it's important that you write it down. To write it down means to record it. It means to scribe. It means to... Uh, right to, to put it. And one thing I love about this, about recently, we, we've gotten into vision boards and vision boards show a finished product. A vision board says when it's all completed, this is what my life will look like. I will have traveled here. I would have earned this degree. I will have done this in my career. He says, write it down. He says, write it down because this is the finished product. This is what I'm telling you what your life is going to be. Write it down. And why do I write it down? Because I believe in positive uh, uh, spoken, uh, verbal and visual affirmations. I need to see the end every day when I get up. I need to see the end every week when things get tough at work, right? He says, and write it down so those that may read it may run with excitement. He says, write it down. This vision is so good and it's so big. It's the finished product. Those that see it should get up and run with excitement. Here's what I want us to understand. If the people who see your vision don't run with excitement, you need to stop showing those people what God said about your life. Because by virtue of this text, those who read it should get excited. And a lot of times we get deflated and defeated simply because of the people we showed the vision to and the finalized version to didn't get excited about it. And we allow their opinions and their demeanors and their behaviors to sway us from believing what God said. He says, so look, when people see it, they should get excited. I'm saying if they don't get excited, stop showing them. There are people out there that are waiting to cheer you on, right? He says, because the appointed time, when the appointed time comes, well, it'll come to fruition. Galatians 6 and 9 says, don't get weary in well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you don't give up. Meaning at the appointed time, you will get a harvest if you don't give up, right? The appointed time. Sometimes the appointed time can, can seem far away from the present time. Sometimes things can happen and take place and transpire that'll make the appointed time seem like it's never going to come to fruition. And God is saying that at my time, at my season, I'm going to bring this thing to fruition. He says, understand that this vision speaks to the end. It will speak to the end. It will not prove false. God is not a man that he can lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He says, though it linger, wait for it, Habakkuk 2. It will certainly come. The vision, the vision board, the thing that you write, the scribe, um, it'll speak to an appointed time. And that time may seem like it's far uh, removed. Appointed time and present time may not always coincide. But God is saying, if you just have enough faith in me to believe that it's coming, it may be slow according to your standards, but I don't move in time. I move through eternity. So if you can just wait for me, it's going to come to pass. 
to the visionary, I'm telling you, don't give up. The, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. God's word is still God's word. And the word that he gave you, that he gave you, the word, the vision that he gave you was still going to come to pass if you just sit still and stay in the race. I want to pray with you for encouragement on tonight. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the vision. God, we thank you right now just for being who you are. Lord, in the midst of all this anxiety and some frustration, God, we will not throw in the towel on the vision that you've given us. We believe that you gave us a vision and you showed us the finished product. And Lord, no matter where we are in that process, the finished product has to come to pass. And so we're going to wait. We're going to serve. We're going to pray. We're going to sow. We're going to continue to worship all in expectance of this vision to come to pass. And God, we praise you in advance because you're not a man that you can lie. So God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise right now. And we just thank you in your darling son, Jesus name. Amen. God bless you all. We will be seeing you on your next podcast. Grace and peace to you.